Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a day that I have been waiting two and a half years for. Today is the collection day of my brand new Ford GT. And for the delivery, we have come down to the Goodwood Motor Circuit. We've driven here in my two Ford Focus RSs, the Heritage Edition and the Red Edition. We are also going to be joined by some amazing cars. The 68 Escort Mark I, a Ford GT40, also the 2000 2005 GT. So today the covers will come off, the car will be unloaded right here on the start line of the Goodwood Motor Circuit. I'll take it for the first ever drive, the first mile it does around the track. I cannot wait for this car and to share it with you guys. So let's get today started, let's head on in. It is time for the Ford GT. It's time then, the car is inside the truck, but look at the lineup that we are joined by today for some photos and to fully encompass the whole experience. We have, starting on the left, the 1967 Ford GT40 race car in the livery of the winning car from 1966. On the right, the first generation of the Ford GT, the 2005 in white with the blue stripes. The colors of these are going to look amazing when that door is opened in a moment and we can take a look at it. On the left here, we have the 1968 Allen Man race Racing Escort Mark I, the winner of the British Touring Car Championship in that year. This is the car to which my Focus RS Heritage pays tribute, the 50th anniversary to that very car. And the specifics of this are that the Allen Mann Gold of this paintwork is the exact colour used for the stripes of the GT inside the truck. And of course, at the rear, we also have the red edition. So it is very much history of Ford here, some pretty significant cars, but I think it is time now to actually open this up and to take a very first full look at my brand new Ford GT. And I cannot believe I'm saying this. I applied for the car in April 2016, almost three years ago. In the summer, I got my allocation for it. And now it is actually here. And in a moment, we're going to be seeing it in the sunshine. It's a lovely day now. It started off rather wet and gloomy earlier, but the sun has come out. The sky has turned blue. So let's get these doors opened and let's take a look at the GT. Here it comes. The door is opening. The car is about to be right there. GT. Isn't that beautiful? Let's get it out and see it in the sunshine. Out it emerges. Look at this, the liquid red with the man gold stripes being piloted by Gavin from the Ford GT team, the delivery specialist handing it over today. Wearing my number plate, SH66MEE. Of course, the Schmee plate, 66, the year that it was victorious at Le Mans. We have the very low sunshine, but right now, look at the smile. It's here, it's actually here. The Ford GT has arrived, the new Schmee mobile. And look at it, just look at this. Parking now between the other two cars, between the 05 and the 67 GT40. You can see the resemblance, but 
That is just incredible. Gavin, I've got to come and say hello. Hey Tom. Thank you. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a car. I'm, I'm completely speechless. I mean, everything, everything that I hoped it would be. So let's take a few minutes, take it all in, and then get the induction, get all the things sorted out, and then I'll be driving it around this very piece of tarmac. This is just crazy. With this lineup of cars, and you can tell the way they're placed for some photos that we've just been taking, but the new GT, pride of place at the very front, flanked on either side by its predecessors. And I love how you can see the DNA from those two generations in the new car, all the way from the one that is over 50 years old, the shape of it, although it's absolutely tiny, but the headlights, the front end, to the newer car, the first generation of the new GT that sits a little bit taller, the GT40, because it was just 40 inches tall. The new car is 43, you can drop it down to 41 inches when you put it into the race mode. But let me take you on a walk around to talk a bit about the car and introduce my full specification that I have gone for on this magnificent thing. So the Ford GT, they're building just over a thousand of them in total. It is very much race car for the road. Ford build it with Multimatic, it's built and assembled in Canada and they actually went racing with the car that is basically the same as this. The same chassis, the same suspension, the same engine goes into the GT LM that was victorious in the 2016 24 Hours of Le Mans, as well as 50 years earlier, four years on the trot with these back at the time. This is actually the race car version as opposed to the road car of the GT40. You have this teardrop style cabin with these amazing flying buttresses around either side of the 3.5 litre twin turbocharged V6 EcoBoost engine, 650 56 horsepower out of the car, rear wheel drive, seven speed dual clutch, and just look at the whole shape of it. It's the most crazy aero car. I think one of the prettiest looking cars ever, particularly with the way it looks back towards its predecessors. This car, of course, had a naturally aspirated V8. The new one goes for the lighter twin turbocharged V6 with the exhaust tailpipes here at the rear, very much aggressive in style. Look at this design around the taillights. And in fact, aero work comes out of the center of those. Now the spec of my car in particular, the main body color is liquid red. It's a multi-layer, deep red paintwork. You can see the bright highlights when the sun catches it, but also through to the much deeper pearlescent shades um, on the offsides. In the center, we have that dual stripe. The signature stripe, as you can see from the silver on the black, the blue on the white, and in this case, the gold on the red, the Alan Mann racing gold that Henry Mann so kindly let me use to create a modern tribute to that very car right there, which of course itself has that connection to the Focus RS. In fact, the Escort was literally the predecessor in terms of style and kind of car to the Focus that we have now, an immensely successful product for Ford. But who would ever think that a car like this would come from the blue oval from Ford. Now it's wearing the Schmie plate, the 66, to pay tribute again to the year that that car was victorious. And down at the bottom, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. A good quote from Henry Ford, of course, one of the most famous ones. I'm not going to pretend that I love that number plate plinth, but legally it does kind of need to be on the car to actually drive it out on the road. And this thing is a road car, even though it looks like the craziest of race cars. So we've got the red with the gold. I opted to have the satin carbon fiber. You can have it in black or you can have gloss carbon fiber but I love the satin to contrast against the glossy paintwork. You've got aero parts here, the flaps in there actually open and close. Around the side carbon ceramics are standard. I've gone for the black calipers. I might make them gold to bring some of that color into the side of the car but we've got the five twin spoke graphite wheels, the regular wheel for the car. Also originally I thought I might make the wheels gold but I do kind of like them in the graphite, I think it works really well with the carbon fiber. So just to walk all the way around it, look at the uh, cooling that you have here. In fact, the cooling's actually really clever. It comes in, goes back up through the buttress and then into the engine bay. All of that happens inside. It's a skin tightly wrapped around the mechanicals going on inside it. And back there, the engine that produces all of that power. So let's have a quick look at the interior. Let's open the doors, press in here, it pops, and we can open it up and have a look in here. And at this moment, I've not actually taken a step inside. So my car has the dark energy interior, all the black Alcantara, 
clean, simple, for purpose. It's a race car after all. All the controls on the steering wheel, the digital displays, and yes, maybe I'll get the carbon fiber uh, extras that you can have on here for the side sills. But having not at this moment taken a step inside, I think it is now time to do so. I'm not actually sure what the best way to do this is. The car is incredibly low to the ground, carbon fiber tub, naturally, um, left-hand drive car. So let's swing in to the Ford GT for the first time ever. Close the door. Wow, it's snug. So you have a pedal box that moves. You actually have a strap on this side um, where you pull this. He says, just grab it, there we go. And you can pull that and push the pedals away from you. There you go, they click and lock into place. And the steering wheel as well. You can adjust this, put the lever at the bottom, push it away, there we go. Belt up, so I bought the add-ons for the harnesses, but they're not installed at the moment, we've just got the normal three-point belts. But it is very cosy in here, where, by the way, they also have the key. You can just about see that GT on the back. So, should we press the big red button down here and start it up? Oh, goodness me. We're into life. Digital display has come alive. We're in normal mode. Actually, this might be the perfect time to do one other thing. If we turn this through the different driving modes, you've got wet, normal. If you keep going, you've got sport. The dashboard changes in each mode. One more, you go into T, which would be track mode. The car drops two inches, five centimeters, just like that at the push of a button. The wing shoots up behind. Ha, oh, super cool. First things first, let's twizzle this to go into drive. There we go, so we're in gear. Let's get moving then in the GT for the first time ever. Now I will just point out by the way that this isn't going to be the world's fastest first drive. The car has not yet been to Topaz to have its paint protection film. So for the avoidance of getting any chips or damage, and you can hear some stones already, of course there aren't that many around, but I don't want the car to get damaged. But here we are, driving it. I've just realized the reality of what I'm actually doing right now. I am driving my Ford GT. It is complete race car, even at 30 miles an hour, you can hear the sounds and noises and feel of it, the firm suspension in track mode desperately low to the ground. In fact, quite spectacularly super low. And this is Goodwood. This is a harrowing, dangerous, narrow circuit with grass either side. There have been huge stories and things that have happened here, massive events that they host, of course the history as well. And now I'm driving my first ever mile in the Ford GT around the track. So let me just drop it down into a second, down into first gear. Okay, if I come to a stop, by the way, here, you can pop it into park, and then with the to toggle on the steering wheel, up we shoot instantly, and the dashboard changes. So now we're in normal sport mode. I'm just learning as I go. Oh, the sounds! And this is the standard exhaust, not the upgrade exhaust as well. But you get those barbels, but you have to drive over 600 miles, only 4,000 RPM or so. Oh, it's gonna be a long, long innings. I say that, I'm gonna try and get it done as soon as I can when the car's been for its paint protection film. And then, the things I'm gonna do with this, the seating position, you're in the middle, you've got these great views over the arches. Wow, this is, this is dreamland, this car. Oh, it feels so cool already. I just wanna put my foot down. I just wish I could accelerate and drive so much harder. We're on a slightly drier piece of track. The noises and the bubbles and the lift off wastegate as well. Really cool sounds. It's so raw. The feeling of it, everything is very tight, like the steering, the brake pedal feel. I'm... This is Dreamland. This is it. It's here. After all of this waiting, this is the Ford GT. 
The weather, as usual in the UK, is doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things, but we're nearly wrapped up here. I've just had the full induction tour to the entire car, so I spent a few hours with Gavin going through just about every detail of it. So, for example, how you plug in the trickle charger at the front, how you access the luggage space, how you access it, if there's a problem with the battery, if it goes flat, for example, all the details of the software for the display and the controls. Here, I'll just quickly show you the uh, luggage storage space that you have in the back, which is... Um, nominal it's not exactly the greatest but you lift up this rear hatch which of course being carbon fiber is incredibly light and then back here uh, you have some of the tools and things the trickle charger uh, the locking wheel nuts and various different parts and actually if you need to put the car in neutral small fun things so you can access the gearbox using this tool deep down here in the bottom of the rear storage and that gets very warm as I can actually feel from the photo shoots we've been doing out on the track and to close it you give it a very firm press on there. So fun things like how to get the wing back down. You have to drive up to 18 miles an hour to manage it. My car has those black exhausts. If you have the uh, upgrade exhaust, they look a little bit different, but those are really, really cool against this. And as you can tell, it is now a little bit windy and choppy here, but I'll go over all of the details with you about this car. Something fun that was done, just in case you're wondering. So if I open up the door again, um, the team from Multimatic who have helped out with this, um, who obviously look after the car, have actually fitted some film here excuse the wind I'm sorry uh, that protects it from any damage so that's um, gonna help us ahead of getting the paint protection film done I love this and then to lock it you uh, have the button there the symbol there that lets you know and then it's actually keyless as well so it can keep the key in the pocket when you arrive at the car to open it how cool does it look though even in completely different light now to how we had it earlier here in front of the Goodwood Motor Circuit paddock actually that is a scene on its own at the moment you know I think I haven't really taken all of this in. We're also joined by multiple Focus RSs today, including my old blue one. He's also come down as well. I might head over and just check that out. But it's pretty cool, isn't it? The light is going down now at Goodwood, so the cars are being loaded up into the transporter to be taken back home. But this was part one. We're now going to be heading with the Escort over to Allen Man Racing to see more of the cars that are kept over there. So for now, the Ford GT, the 05 is in. The Escort will go last because it's going to be taken off first and the GT40 tucked over there as well. But the noise of that, the V8 grumbling away. I just love the comparison between the previous gen, the first gen and the new second gen. Anyway, we also need to go and load up my car. I'm going to be driving it all the way over on the road due to not having PPF yet. So we'll be taking it in a transporter until that's all done. We'll be driving in the focuses. So let's head over and put it in the truck. So this is going to be loaded up with Tony from Turbo Transport, who's going to be taking it over for us. Thank you very much, Tony. So that will go into the single car uh, trailer in there, which no doubt it will see again in the future. But also here, the three RSs together, the Heritage, the Red, and my old blue RS. The owner of the car has brought it down with the Mountain package, the 375, also with the exhaust system. So it's nice to see the three together again. The last time that happened was when I went to pick up these two cars uh, when they were brand new, the kind of double collection day. Those are all looking very good. And then this is gonna roll on in. So the mirrors are just slightly folded in. They don't go too far. And it is a very, very wide car. Remarkably wide. The rumble away as it heads on in. You can see this is a big, big trailer. I'm probably putting pressure on them now by filming it.
moving it to try and <laughs> Here we've got the car then inside the Alan Mann Racing Workshop. Now the last time I was here was actually to come down and choose the gold, to talk to Henry Mann, to talk about making that gold paint on this very car. Six months later, here we are with the car back alongside the Lotus Cortina. That raced in the early part of the 1968 season ahead of the Escort and also with a GT40 road car here as well. So we had the race car earlier. This is one of the road cars. It is incredibly small. I actually just tried to sit in the car. I'm a bit crazy in there but it's also got a fairly extended elongated rear but this is a 1966 car in red we brought the black one out earlier for some contrast against the other cars that we had but here we are all packed up at this time of year ready for christmas but in the workshop taking a few photos in well look at this how crazy what an environment and what a day this has been So we loaded the GT back into the transporter to bring it home to my garage, to the storage, where it is here now alongside the Vantage GT8, the 675 LT Spider, and also we have the two Focuses and Benzene Benz Mustang. But just look at this car. It is low, it is wide, it is crazy. It is a dream come true that this car has now arrived and I'm going to be able to enjoy it, experience it, and share it with you over the coming years here on the channel. A huge thanks to everyone who has been part of today, the guys taking the photos and videos, everyone who's helped with the cars for GT. B, Alan Mann Racing, Gavin the Ford GT delivery specialist who's been my contact throughout this process to spec the car to get it ready and to finally take delivery of it today. I cannot believe it's actually here. It's been a long old wait since I first applied for it and in fact the jacket that I'm wearing today, the Ford uh, GT Ford Performance jacket was given out to attendees with Ford in 2016 at the 24 hours of Le Mans when this car's sister, the Ford GT LM, was of course victorious and this is literally the closest I think road focused car to get to its racing sibling and I can already sense that even at just small slow speeds today but what a day being at Goodwood, being with those other cars, taking it for my first ever drive on the road literally around the Goodwood motor circuit, a famous iconic venue and that's just the beginning. There's a lot more to come on the channel over the coming years like I said and I cannot wait for what I'm going to be able to do with this car and what I'm going to be able to share with you guys. So a huge thanks to everyone who has been part of this adventure, this journey. I cannot thank you enough. Big times are coming ahead and I am certainly excited for what's in store. Now I need to go home, sleep a night, come back and see if this is still here or if it has just been a dream. We'll see you tomorrow, but thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you again very soon. Cheers.